One man, one mission, to rid the world of chronic anxiety once and for all. The Anxiety Guy, Dennis Simsek, shares his personal transformation from living a life filled with overwhelming worry to becoming a full-fledged positivity machine, a leading authority in generalized anxiety. Dennis gets to the truth of your mental health challenges and sets you on a path to transforming each and every area of your life. Here he is, the one and only, The Anxiety Guy. Hey guys, and welcome to episode number 44. This is the Anxiety Guy podcast, and I'm Dennis Simsek. Thank you for being a part of this podcast. Now, today, we're talking about the war in our minds. But first, I'd love if you head over to Twitter and follow the underscore anxiety underscore guy, because I'd love to have a conversation with you on Twitter about your anxiety, whatever it may be. I'm hanging out there a lot lately, so if you have a Twitter account, add me, I'll add you back and we'll start a convo. Now, today guys, we're talking about conscious minds, we're talking about unconscious minds, we're talking about acronyms, we're talking about why people fail at health anxiety, we're talking about why people fail in general with GAD. Now, I I started to decide I wanted to do a podcast like this about winning the war in our minds because I got so many emails of people telling me, Dennis, I can't win the war in my mind. So people are basically treating their minds like it's a tennis match. You know, it's like a back and forth battle between two uh, wants and two needs that people need. And they feel like that their mind is not working for them, but it's working against them right? So if you're in that same situation where you've got this dire need, you need to start to live your life a certain way, you need to start feeling grateful again, you need to stop obsessing over your anxiety and your symptoms and your panic attacks and your worries and all the things that continue to run your life, then this episode is for you. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard the saying that we only use 10% of our minds And that is so, so true. I want you guys to get a visual of an iceberg. Basically, that iceberg at the top is basically the part where you can see the top of the iceberg. And that's the 10% that you can see of that iceberg. Then below that is the 90%, the thick part, the stuff that goes all the way down to the ground, the stuff we can't see. Now the 10% at the top, I want you guys to understand that that is your conscious mind. And the 90% below is basically your unconscious mind. Too many times when we approach our problems, we approach it with a conscious mind approach and we fail. We fail so many times to win the war against our minds and to get our minds to work for us rather than against us. And I'm gonna explain why that happens. now. Think of WAR, the acronym WAR, which stands for W, which is your willpower, A, which is your analytical self, R, which is your rational mind, okay? So WAR put together is willpower, analytical, rational. Now, too many times when we approach our anxiety, we tend to approach it with tons of willpower. We're going, you know what? I'm gonna do this today, you know. I'm not gonna let panic attacks stand in my way. I'm not gonna let anxiety stand in my way. I'm gonna change my thoughts and all that stuff and we've got all this willpower behind. We've got this analytical voice talking to us and we're rationalizing, it all makes sense, but we only approach our problems with uh, the idea of having a strong willpower, strong motivation, and that, rarely, rarely works for anybody, okay? And the reason it doesn't work is because there's not enough unconscious fuel behind the willpower, okay? There's not enough of the other stuff, which we're gonna talk about later. Now, willpower can be affected by HALT, the acronym that is HALT, which is H-A-L-T, and it starts with hunger. You know, how many times have you wanted to do something but you started to get really hungry. And because of that hunger, it took you away from the path that you were headed on. You know, it happens to everybody. And hunger could be a big reason for why your willpower gets diminished, right? Um, The A is the anger. 
A lot of times we become angry, and when we become angry, we lose the willpower and we lose our path towards what we want to achieve, the long-term good feelings that we want. Lonely. L in the halt stands for lonely. So you might feel like, oh, you know, I'm at home and I'm lonely, you know, and you start to do things differently than what you truly intended yourself to do because you feel lonely, okay? And the T is basically being tired, and this is a big one for people, you know, I'm too tired to do this, I'm too tired to do that, right? And a lot of times being tired can stop you from continuing on with the willpower that you you had in the beginning, right? So the war in your mind becomes halted, okay, by halt, the hunger, the anger, the loneliness, and the tiredness, and that diminishes all the power of the conscious mind, the 10%, right? Now, that willpower comes with the A, which is the analytical mind, and what it does, it, it, it adds stuff up, it, what adds up, what doesn't, um, what I should do in any given situation. Basically, it, it analyzes your life. It analyzes your life. And then there's the rational mind, which is the ability to rationally decide things, right? But when we think about war and the conscious mind, there's so many aspects that are missing. There's so many things that we do unconsciously, automatic. You know, think about yourself driving. Do you ever really think about your driving? Or while you're thinking, while you're driving, do you actually think about different things? You know, what's going to happen throughout your day? What happened yesterday? You know, all the stuff that you deal with on a daily basis. And uh, it's almost like that. You know, 50% of the things we do on a daily basis is conscious and 50% of the things we do on a daily basis is unconscious, right? But when we want to solve a problem, when we want to overcome health anxiety, we need to get on the ship, the S-H-I-P, the ship, the acronym that holds the power behind your unconscious mind. And when we get on the ship, which I'm going to explain in a second, we start to tackle the bottom part of the iceberg, the 90%, right? And this is when change happens. Change does not happen strictly with willpower. Willpower is important, but it'll only take you a certain way, right? After that, your ship will begin to take its place and it will start to lead the way. Now, let's get into ship. Ship, basically, your unconscious mind is basically the strategies, the S, the habits, the H, the impulses, the I, or the emotions, and the P, which is the physiological control. So this is where the juice is. This is where the power is, guys. This is when your life starts to transform, when you've got a firm hold on your ship. Now, let's talk about strategies. A lot of times, we don't even recognize what strategy we're taking. We don't have one, right? Unconsciously, we have one, right? We keep on doing things a certain way, but we truly don't have a strategy. You must have a strategy to implement in order to achieve a certain goal. H, the H in ship is your habits. A lot of times you wake up in the morning, you eat the same cereal every day, you might turn the TV on for a bit, you might shower at a certain amount of t a certain time in the morning, you might put the soap on your body the same way every day, you might grab your towel with the same hand, you might drive to work in the same direction every day. These are built-in habits. In order for you to get out of your comfort zone, in order for you to step outside the bubble of anxiety, of fear, of panic, you must be first willing to change a habit. You must be as well understanding that the new habit is in fact the one that you should be doing in order to achieve the goal that you want, right? So you must change your habits, your routines, your rituals. You must do things differently if you want a different result. 
What did Einstein say? Insanity, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. If you take nothing else out of this podcast, understand that your habits are what's driving your life in the direction that it's headed right now. If you want things to change, change your habits. But first, recognize them. And then the I in ship, which is your impulses and your emotions. Now, everybody in this planet wants good emotions. We want to feel good. We want to feel grateful. We want to feel joyful. We want to be connected with people. We want to be loved and we want to love. But the problem is, is when we get those bad emotions, those bad impulses, what do we tend to do? We stuff it back down into the corner and then it manifests in different ways in the future in our lives. It manifests in ways that we don't want it to, right? So if, if there's a certain fear, if there's a certain anxiety that started early on in my life between the ages of zero and seven when you started to build those fearful habits, those rituals, right? If that is popping up in your life now, recognize what it is, recognize where it came from, and deal with it. If it's a fear of rejection, if it's a fear of failure, if it's a fear of success, whatever it may be that your parents basically controlled you with, you know, all that fear and your teachers controlled you with all that fear, it's probably popping up in your life today. Recognize where it's coming from and understand that your past does not equal your present or your future. Your past does not equal your present or your future. That is up to you. Okay, so when you have an emotion, don't tuck it away in a corner. Don't push it away. When you're driving in your car and all of a sudden you get those bad feelings and a memory popped up from years ago and you're going, ah. Oh, that doesn't feel good. Instead of turning on the radio at full at full volume and going, you know what, I'm just going to forget about this. It's going to pop up again later on and in areas where you don't want it to pop up. So deal with it. Understand that, you know, where it came from. Understand why it's popping up. Understand all sorts of things related around that fear that popped up, that feeling, that impulse, the eye in your ship right? So don't push emotions away, deal with them. The fourth one is physiological control and how you control your body. Basically, when I see a depressed person and I'm working one-on-one -on -one with them on Skype, and you can do that through anxietyexit.com with me, um, I basically go, you know, as soon as I look at them, I can tell what kind of emotions they're dealing with, you know, what direction their lives are headed, you know, why they're stuck in a constant state of fear and anxiety and confusion, right? I can tell right away just by looking at their body. And body language plays a big part in what you think and what your behaviors are, right? Let me say that again. Your body language, the way you use your physiology, the way you use your body on a daily basis goes a long way towards what thoughts you have, what beliefs you have, and what kind of actions and behaviors you take on a daily basis. We all try to fix our thoughts. We all try to change our beliefs. We all try to work with our minds. But how often do you actually work with your body? You know, if I was basically in need of becoming a better uh, basketball player, the first person I'd go up to and I'd, I'd look up Steph Curry, I'd look up LeBron James, I'd look up these guys and i go, you know what? Wow, look at the way they're talking. Look at the way they're walking. Look at the tones in their voices. Look at their hand gestures. Look at how confident they are. And because of that, that translates into self-esteem. That translates into moving away from fear and moving towards freedom, right? So I would model someone's internal processes, but I'd also model their external processes, the way their body works. And that is the P in SHIP. Right. 
So I want you guys to understand and get more knowledgeable about the unconscious mind. I've basically given you a small insight into it today. I've told you about SHIP, which is your strategies, your habits, your impulses, slash emotions, and your physiological control. I've told you about the 90% of that bottom of the iceberg, the part where you can't see that's running your life right now. It's basically the machine that's running your life, right? It's the stuff you can't see, the stuff you're not aware of that's controlling your anxiety. Then there's the 10%, the conscious mind, right? Your willpower, your analytical self, and your rational self, the war, right? Too many times we just go straight on to a problem with willpower. I'm going to do this. I watch a motivational video every single morning. I'm talking about other people now. And I'm going, you know what? I'm motivated. I'm not going to let this stand in my way. Yes, it'll help you. It will help you. Those motivational videos are fantastic. But those are basically just the starting points, guys. Don't expect to just win the war against your mind strictly with willpower. It's not gonna happen. It's gonna wear out, right? Uh, like a balloon that fuses out, it's gonna wear out. And it's gonna wear out because of your halt. You're gonna get hungry, you're gonna get angry, you're gonna get lonely, and you're gonna get tired. Halt is what halts the war in your mind, the willpower, okay? So, get educated about your unconscious mind you know in with anxiety we always do things in a way that doesn't support our greatest selves you know we always find excuses i don't have the time i don't have the power i don't have the strength i don't have the energy i don't i don't i don't i don't have the support team all you need to overcome your health anxiety is you. That's all you need. You have all the resources within you in order to make a change starting not tomorrow, not later today, but right now. You have all the resources. I'm behind you 100%. Every week when we come together and these podcast guys, it's a time to become united. It's a time for you to understand that I, myself, have been through the tens and the elevens out of tens in anxiety scales. I've been there. I've been there. And so have thousands of people worldwide that continue to follow what I'm preaching in these podcasts, what I'm preaching in the YouTube videos, what I'm preaching through the End the Anxiety program on anxietyexit.com. Do those things. Invest in yourself. Get the job done. Follow in the footsteps of people that have accomplished the things you want to accomplish, that have overcome their fears naturally. I believe in you. And now it's time for you to believe in yourself. And don't wait for someone else to do that for you. Don't wait for that one line that you're going to read in a book that you think is going to transform your entire life. It's not going to happen. There is no magic wand, guys. Put in the effort. Put in the time, put in the patience in the face of great setbacks. Because when you do that, that's when change starts to happen. Remember, when you're trying to change something, you'll always be taking two steps forward and one step back, four steps forward and two steps back. It might always feel like that for a certain amount of time. But then you get to the point where you've trained your unconscious mind. You've taken it for walks. You've fed it. You know, you've picked up its poop. You know, you've done all this stuff and you have all of a sudden gotten control over your unconscious mind, right? You need to start treating it as if you were to treat a puppy, training a puppy. You're training your unconscious mind. You're training your ship, okay? And I, what I want you guys to do is really listen to this podcast episode a few times. Share it with other people so that they have the tools. Share it with other people so they have the tools to overcome their fears and anxieties, guys. Let's create a tribe. Let's create a community of people that are not willing to settle for a stale, stationary life anymore. We can do it, but we must do it 
together. We must feed off of each other's energy. We must be on the Facebook page asking questions. We must be keep we must keep pushing each other to find our best highest selves and I believe in us okay guys so share this episode like I said head over to YouTube and like the anxiety guy over there I love conversing with you guys through the comments section on YouTube and I answer tons of questions if you have a question on YouTube in one of my videos understand that I will get to that question I love it I love answering your questions guys I'll see you guys in the next episode but first remember that you are more than anxiety love you guys thanks for being an important part of the anxiety guy podcast community if you enjoyed this podcast please leave a positive rate and review if you're searching for further support on your road to recovery from anxiety head over to anxietyexit.com and take part in the powerful and the anxiety program based around the cbt model if you're searching for a more one-on-one approach you can sign up now for personal coaching sessions with dennis via skype remember you are more than anxiety see you in the next episode